We have a fascinating guest, a friend of mine who happens to have the same name, Cindy Cindy, but I go by Cynthia. She goes by Cynthia when she's in trouble with yes, her mom. Always. So, um, but I want to welcome. Cindy, you have a fascinating journey to share with us. Number one, our backgrounds are really very similar. Yes. We both came from military families. Yes. Your father was in the Navy. My um, and Navy Marines. He Navy would say Marines. Marines, but I would say, yes. yeah, that's the Navy. Yeah, so <laughs> Navy Marines, and my dad was in the Navy. Was your dad a pilot? He was a navigator. A navigator. Uh -huh. Okay, my husband calls me the navigator. But, <laughs> um, but so my dad was a, fi a fighter pilot, uh -huh. flew on aircraft carriers, so you have that. You, um, your parents, so you really, you're a bi-coastal chick. I am. You're a California girl. Yes. And displaced in Washington, D.C. Displaced, <laughs> I know. It's kind of like, how did I end up here? Exactly. But your journey is very similar to mine yeah. in that you had a military family, military mm -hmm. birth, you were raised around the world, I mm -hmm. imagine. Uh, no, actually, not. Really? Surprisingly, yes. Just coast to coast. And uh, so we'll get into it, but definitely just coast to coast. So really? My yeah. parents divorced at an, uh, at an early age for, my, for me. For you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. The military mm -hmm. kind of goes coast to coast. Okay. I never went to a school more than one year my entire I life know. growing yes. up, every single year. Um, so that was a fascinating experience. Mm -hmm. but, but it really was for us, every time we moved, it was you go. I just remember piling up all these kids uh -huh. and dogs right. and a cat <laughs> in a station wagon right. and going across the country. Country uh -huh. and your parents yelling at you to be quiet. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop. Are we there yet? Are we there yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah. And don't touch her. <laughs> Stay out of her space. Remember uh -huh. all those uh -huh. journeys. So, but you were, your father, when your parents divorced, your father ended up here. He did, yes. And um, so he was in the Marines and he retired here. Uh, but definitely uh, he was stationed in El Toro, California, is how we wound up staying there uh, when they uh, split for the last time. So your mother liked California and said this uh, is where I want to stay? From California. She was, she and my father were born and raised in Lodi. North, okay. Northern California, and um, they met in high school, and my mother was best friends with his sister, and, and then the story developed where he went into the service, and so I've been to uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, Buford, South Carolina, but always be back and forth between uh, California and, and the, the East Coast, East Coast so right. nothing in between. Really? Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, we spent most of our time, I think it really was, uh -huh. it seemed to be in the, one coast or the other. So your parents divorced. How old were you when your parents divorced? Uh, when they, my father, you know, it's a, the story that I don't remember my father around as I was growing up. But uh, I was seven when the last time my father did uh, get transferred to Washington, D.C., and that's when we were definitely uh, coast to coast. But my father, what I remember most is he served three tours in Vietnam, and he was the uh, navigator, the uh, radar intercept um, in the F-4, uh, during the service, and I think when he was around, we wished most that he wasn't around because yes. it was either he was sleeping or my mother and father were arguing. Um, but it was, I don't, you know, my father really wasn't around when I was growing up. Uh, so I got to know him a lot better during my high school years and then college and then work. So you came so, back and would see him yes. and spend time. But he left, I guess that must have been when I was seven, went to Washington, D.C. to finish out his career and retire in D.C. and then started his life in business and how many kids are in your family uh three so three. i'm the middle child the my middle. sister's a year older and we fought like cats and dogs because my mother used to always dress us the same and we were always the same even though i was blonde and she was the dark hair um so like mom there's something wrong with this picture uh and my brother's two years younger than me uh tony so amy and tony so we had in our we were four and so it's three girls and then my brother and my mother dressed us all the same too uh -huh. i don't know if it's like a rule when you're in the military i just remember <laughs> did, did you do fashion shows oh well, my, my mother God. used to always do the and my fashion mother showed shows our clothes uh -huh. so everything was identical i uh -huh. she get a good deal on fabric yeah you know <laughs> It was the funniest is when my brother was in the matching flower shorts that my sister and I in dresses, so that was always cute. That is punishment. Yes. But we used to dress my brother like a doll, you know, We'd put him in baby Makeup. clothes. It make my father crazy. Oh, yeah. He hated that. <clears throat> so growing up, so, so you kind of had this in, interesting environment, so you really, your dad wasn't around, and when he was around, it was probably a lot tense. I remember that yeah. it's always kind of, my dad would be deployed for a long time when he yes. came home. It's kind of like re- Just integrating again and just kind of getting, getting to know that person, yes. yeah. And all I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember just my father being gone like for six to seven months, and all I remember, my mother goes, wait till your father gets home. <laughs> wait till your father. So all I thought about is, oh my God, tonight at dinner, she's going to roll out the scroll. Yes. We're going to go over all the stuff we did. <laughs> the list. And it's been the next six months uh -huh. in my room. So, yes. you know. Well, it, And it didn't happen, but you always no. just kind of thought that was going to happen. Yeah, and it, it, it was. It was um, a family, so it was nice. Uh, I mean, I really, I was young, and I, I didn't know 
better on how my mother's and father's relationship was. Uh, but we did, my dad was always the fun guy, so he, we would always um, Disneyland drive dad. my mother crazy because he'd come in and just, you know, save the day on fun, and as my mother was very strict, uh, but it, it, it was very rare that uh, he was uh, there for long periods of time. So, what were you studying in high school? What did you want to do when you were going to school? I, high school, I was really shy, so I was kind of nerdy. I loved math. I um, excelled in, in high school, but I spent most of my uh, high school recesses in the, in the library studying. I was such a nerd. So, I uh, played sports, uh, soccer and softball, track, and um, loved math. I mean, I uh, took all the advanced math courses, and then my, I got really sick my senior year and couldn't take one of the midterms, so my math teacher said, you'll never excel in math, mathematics because you're, you didn't take it seriously. So I showed him oh my <laughs> later in life when you I know, took for math for the rest of my life. To have an interest, in, especially in the generation you know, we're coming through, it would be an exception for women to be in math courses. Right. I mean, women Definitely. just were not. I mean, I think they're recognizing now that women can do the sciences and yes. should be in the sciences and we need to to not have this perception that right. you know math is just for boys science is just for boys exactly. that is for everybody and it's important it is important and i and i do a lot uh, today mentoring and talking to whether it's the high schools and just women in math and women in the sciences fields and uh, specifically mexican families because I, I am mexican and what i grew up with is that a lot of the, the Mexican girls would finish high school and that was it. Their job was to become mothers and and uh, live at home. And and I think to me it's that, that you can be in the sciences field and uh, excel and, and just like I am now with engineering services as a company. So well, that's it's very it's very exciting talking the possibilities with, with youngsters today who don't see that. When I lived in Texas I used to go into the Hispanic high schools mm -hmm. because and one of the things that's an interesting um, statistical recognition is the fact that population is going to be predominantly Hispanic. Right. And it's a highly ignored, mm -hmm. I think, population. The schools are not <coughs> teaching to how important it is to convey or bring in education as a cornerstone. Right. Because those, if, if you're, that's your dominant population, the majority population, that is going to become a leading population right. and influencing where we're going. So I think exactly. that that's really, really important. Yeah, and, and my mother was a school teacher for 34 years, and she taught in Santa Ana. I grew up in, um, and went to school in Santa Ana, uh, California. And so her school was actually turning into bilingual, and it was actually um, Vietnamese, uh, uh, Spanish, as well as uh, English. And, and so it became very challenging because teachers were expected to know Spanish as well, but exactly the same, how the importance of, because the teachers get the students most of the day and then they go home to their uh, families and whether it looked like work or something else it just it was very interesting and challenging at the same time so just trying to break the habits and it's women like you who no matter where you are we set the example for the women to follow mm -hmm. we say I can do that yes. that's an opportunity I didn't perceive that right. I had so what did you study in college and where did you go to college I went to UCLA mm -hmm. and uh, my dream was to go to UCLA for two reasons one I, I knew that I wanted to be a math uh, major and uh, I didn't learn that I had to change my major <laughs> during that because of the physics uh, not being able to pass that but uh, so I was math applied science and then soccer I loved playing soccer so I uh, got my ex uh, acceptance to UCLA a little late came out two weeks late for soccer tryouts and uh, ended up the coach giving me a chance and I made the team and so I got to do both the things of math and uh, soccer. I think that's so exciting. For the shy girl. <laughs> With, for the shy girl, which kind of helped you bring you Help, out of your shoe. Helped me a lot. Yeah, yes. you were really funny about this interview. She's like, I, I just don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I studied all night. Yeah, <laughs> no, you have to study. There's no quiz. There's no test. No physics exam. You're you're fine. Yeah. You're fine.